So this is Netaji Nirmal, okay, uh, co-founder of WebDojo, and uh, I've been consulting with various other companies, and I've been into the industry for seven plus years in relevance to data, okay, data in the sense data science, data engineering, as well as a little bit of big data, okay. So these are the arenas which I'm into for the past seven years. And I have worked with uh, many companies, which includes like uh, JK Groups, uh, Walmart, Bosch, Intel, and a lot of companies. You might have a question how a single person could work with these many companies, right? So I have worked as a consultant and I've been to their competitions. I've been to their events. Okay. I've been the uh, Bosch ambassador for the year 2016 and 17. Okay. So this is how I get in touch with all these many companies. Okay. So that's a point. So that uh, I believe that you'll be clear to whom you're listening to. And if you want to get to know a lot about me, you can just Google my name, N-E-T-H-A-J-I space N-I-R-M-A-L. That's it. Okay. So is it clear? Shall we move forward? Yes. You can just like... Uh, Leave your responses through the chat. Great. Okay. Cool then. So what's the agenda? We must like take a quick look on what we are going to actually do here. Okay. So for what you guys are here, what's your expectation over here? I think I can, if I switch off the video, I can save some bandwidth since some people tell that the voice is breaking, right? Wait, let me put that off. Yeah, I believe that we can save some bandwidth here by switching off the video. Okay, so what's your expectation? What are you going to learn today? And uh, what's your idea on that? Yep. So you guys stay silent over here, this question. Okay, let me take you through the agenda. Of course, about Python. Okay, Python, Python basics. Okay. Yes. Of course, we are going to uh, go hands-on with Python basics. So if you people are willing to like work along with me, like if you wanted to experiment whatever you, you learn here, okay, you can uh, arrange a kind of laptop or something to join the session because if you are using mobile phones to uh, spectate or to attend the meeting, it would not be so much comfortable for you to work hands-on, okay? Because I'll explain you the agenda. The first half, we'll learn the basics about Python in the sense, an introductory part where you'll be going through um, what is Python and why Python gained so much popularity in the industry and what people are doing with Python, okay? And how the industry is moving forward and how Python is going to be in the next 10 years, okay? So we are going to like look into all these industry related informations. Okay. Then once you got to a point that yes, learning Python is something uh, important or it's going to help to grow my career or when you get an anchoring point that we are going to learn something interesting, we'll be moving forward with the coding part. Okay. And this coding is going to be completely hands-on. So Brace up yourself with your systems if you need that. Okay, if you're willing to go hands on. All right. Is it clear? Shall we get started? And in case due to any network issues or any other stuff, if you get disconnected, join back the session uh, as soon as possible. And the same applies to me also. Okay, if I get disconnected, maximum two to three minutes, I'll be back onto the meeting. Right. Shall we get started then? Great. Okay. So I don't know, like, uh, how many of you are from non-tech background over here? If you are from a non-tech background, just mention from which domain you are, like from medicine, from, from law, from the civil background, from mechanical background. So it would be great for me to take ahead the story from mechanical, okay. just give me a moment. Let me take one more screen. I'll stop sharing it for a while, while you're like uh, 
putting the texts. Um, just one second. Okay, so mechanics and diploma, CAC, BTEC, a lot of things are like coming up, interesting stuff. Okay. Electrical and electronics. Okay, fine. Okay. Diploma, triple E. Okay, a lot of like, I believe most of them students are there. If there are individuals who had a career gap in between and trying to switch over the career to a tech field, okay, definitely this will be interesting for you. Okay, before we get to know about Python, okay, why Python and how Python works and all these things, we should get an understanding, basic understanding, okay, how the market is working. Okay, so in, in on that regards, I would like to take up through a short story, which would help you to understand things better. Shall we? You can like use thumbs up or things. Okay. So we are just going to look into how technology got evolved and I'm going to take a small example on that. Okay. So obviously everyone should have studied history, maybe in your schools or at any time. Is there anything interesting which happened in the year 1886? Of course, everyone need to go for a small flashback because this is a linear story starting from 1886. So do you remember any like significant event which happened during 1886? Maybe, do you remember in the sense, of course, through movies, through your school books, or through any novels which you studied? Abacus, okay. I'm hearing it for the first time. Yes, next. No idea. Okay. Historic events. Any such thing? Okay. So to my like ideology, which I have, 1886 is where the Indian Congress was started. So don't think that I'm just going into politics or anywhere related to uh, government. Okay. No, the computers didn't get introduced. We are going to completely move into a different scenario. Okay. I'm going to take only these examples. That's why I'm moving here. Okay. So officially, uh, if you take the concept of cars, okay, 1886 was the year like they officially recorded uh, or they, or the historians assumed that the car was introduced. Okay. So keep your minds open. Don't think that, don't start to think what is the connection between Python and cars and all. I'll take you through it. So come along with me. Keep your minds open. Okay. Don't come to any conclusions before we finish the story and get started. Okay, so at this point of time, the cars might have looked like this, as you see on the screen. Yes. Do you see that? <clears throat> yes, no, is it visible? Yes, cool. Okay, at this point of time, to design or to manufacture or to maintain a car, only two kind of people are more than enough, two kind of like experts, okay. Uh, one is the mechanical engineer and the other one who like designs it, maybe an architect kind of stuff. I mean, kind of guy, okay, who designs the car and uh, make it work and make it run on the roads, okay. Only these two experts or people who are good at these two technology or these two particular domain were like completely enough to make it working and functional, okay. So from here, let's like, Fast forward it a little bit. Maybe during uh, 1920s, 30s, 40s, this area, rather than just having a car to travel, people started to include 
like some extra gadgets into it like radio electric ignition uh, meters which indicate speed uh, not fuel at that time they didn't have such a technology okay all these things then they included lights horns and everything okay at this particular point of time maybe like 20 30 years fast forward from 1886 how many different domain experts do we need to make this car or to keep it functional is mechanical engineer and a kind of architect is enough yes of course at this point a new guy a new domain got into the scenario who was from electrical not even electronics electronics is completely different from electrical here only electrical people came into the scene yes as you uh, mentioned mr nalan kumar okay so these guys came in a matter of like 2 3 decades to do the same thing to make the car work properly we needed like these many people onto the scene okay let's move a little more so again some fast forwarding i came a lot forward because i can't take up the whole story right okay in this point people introduced like digital meters then uh, like monitoring dashboards like you see like the, how many kilometers it has run okay all these things plus indicators lot of buttons kind of stuff were introduced into the car okay and the cars became faster even at this particular point of time we literally needed mechanical engineers architects electrical engineers plus people who deal with this electronic stuff yes of course we can also consider embedded system in this case okay a lot of chips and ic's came into the car okay to like to control everything which is on the dashboards the lights the fuel meter every such thing okay so this was the evolution i think most of you who are in the meeting would have seen this kind of cars okay even these days these kind of cars are there in the market uh, we didn't get uh, so advanced cars in the indian market yet okay okay at this point to do the same thing that is to uh, manufacture or to maintain the car like car markets going up we need four domain experts okay which was doubled in a matter of 50 60 years and next wait a minute yes so this is the current time the current situation so what kind of cars do we have have now take it down what kind of cars do we have yes we have electronic vehicles where chemistry people is also required because you know uh, like what is the important issue in electronic vehicles these days everyone should have been aware about it batteries exactly okay because the raw material which is required to produce batteries are not available in that much quantity in the earth okay so a lot of chemistry relevant people or electrochemistry relevant people are doing research to find out things okay so yeah apart from that we have ev is that the latest trend i think we have a lot of outdated people in the room who's the richest person and what does he do exactly elon comes into the scene so autonomous vehicles or we can call that self driving cars okay in this case do you think a mechanical engineer electronic and electrical plus an architect is more than enough to run this car that is an is of course as you said ai powered car are these guys enough no so who is required two more domain experts the chemistry people are in the it professionals or people who learn like computer relevant stuff are in so we need around like a soft now plus marketing people who do marketing and people who manage it everything are into this thing so to produce this one piece of car i need at least like 8 to 10 domain expert different domain expert okay so people who are into this room why did i ask you about this department or which domain you belong to is that 
whichever domain you belong the domain doesn't work alone by itself in the current market okay each domain is dependent on the other domain okay for example if you take mathematics mathematics is depend on dependent on computer science okay to do all the space related calculations and supercomputers are into it quantum computing is into it okay the physics people they are into it okay and everywhere all the domains i don't tell that all the domains are dependent on computer science or it all the domains are interdependent okay they are dependent on each other this is how the market works now okay so always you must be aware about as many domains as possible we can't become an expert in all the domain of course okay so if you wanted to be a sellable product in the market okay yeah i sounded correct if you wanted to be a sellable product in the market or if you wanted to be an uh, extraordinary person in the market you have to be like this okay and why elon musk is on the top in the sense he knows how to manage all these things okay he knows how to handle things better okay before going further uh, what do you think the next set of evolution is going to be <laughs> fully automated yeah it's even already kind of fully automated solar cars are there currently ai is there it's already in the market the future maybe next after consider 10 years 15 years or 20 years ahead from now how would the cars look like or what would the cars do flying cars of course when jason tells flying cars i just get remembrance of this uh, avatar movie today it got released right it's on the theaters yeah advanced cars yeah advanced cars in the sense like floating cars yes yeah go ahead go ahead with your imaginations imaginations are welcome because crazy ideas only give uh, all these things to the human Uh, running in water yes maybe it could also run in water tony stark's ai okay i think everyone is moving towards <laughs> this part okay so i don't know what could happen after 20 years but what idea i do have in my mind is that okay something like this of course i just copied it from google it's not my creation and all but i'll tell you what would happen how many of you go to gym how how many of you use treadmills no one is physically active how many of you use treadmill or the vfx machine to like work out uh, in the whole house or the gym no one my goodness okay so you can see that there are some people who are in the room who does treadmill and all how many of you observed that uh, consider this is a treadmill okay and okay the conveyor runs here consider this is a top view okay so when you keep your hands here while running on the treadmill it will show your heartbeat pulse rate and all in the dashboard maybe not like this graph in numbers have you seen that yes bpm exactly the right uh, word what about others only one person responded it how many of you have observed this on a treadmill yeah this puja exactly okay so why don't you imagine a car steering which has the same thing and when you are driving obviously your hands are going to be on the car steering why don't they like read your health parameters using the car uh, steering you have smart watches these days forget about it we'll talk about it if we have time at the end that's a different market can they have it in a car but no car has introduced until this point i do have this idea but i have not even taken a patent but i don't want to do it if someone wants to carry over this idea you can the does any car have this the stuff because until this point i was not aware no this could be included okay and 
introduced but not here okay great then okay so if you have the car name it just suggest us like we can just go through it okay okay the future cars will okay we'll go to the general story it will take up it will measure all your health parameters including your breath rate how much oxygen you intake see these days they tell how much water you drink or how much water i mean how much steps you walk okay all these things are like metered up okay where you travel everything and in the coming days they'll tell you how much oxygen you are taking in how much carbon dioxide you are exhaling okay how much nutrition is going in coming out all these details will come up okay so the cars will help in like getting it next okay how many of you seen the latest introduction in the market head up display if your people are like pl were planning to buy a car you must have come up with this head up display yes what it does is it's a transparent uh, glass which displays all the car relevant parameters over there okay so like this why don't you think the all the side glasses which are transparent in a car become a display okay and at that time forget about mobile phones all your tv that is amazon prime netflix your youtube instagram your work already the work at home is actually in the market now okay work from anywhere is again a concept introduced from spotify how many of you are aware about it work from anywhere it's not work from home work from anywhere yes okay and soon this concept might get included you will get a like beautiful branded system into your pc you can work and all your display is nothing but your mirror all the marketing information everything which you get in the mobile you will get here okay so you can like go fly anywhere work anywhere stay anywhere go here and there and you can come back <laughs> okay so these are all the ideas which i have in mind so i would definitely see before i take my last breath i believe okay so in this case uh see how many people are needed to make this one car or an automobile functional can we list out all the people starting from mechanical architect electronical electrical then computer science it people then of course if healthcare is included healthcare people will be there if the car started flying geologists would be there and i don't know how many of you are aware about it there is a new thing in india called yeah chemical i'll come to that topic marine etc etc a lot of people would be required to make this one car functional okay so before two years also i was speaking the same story but i didn't get to know that there will be a new thing got introduced uh, which combines this geo guy csit guy and a pilot together okay and that is called the new the job which is going to be ventured in the market in coming days is called drone piloting everyone knew what is drone there is a separate part or license which you should get to drive a drone and in the coming years maybe you can mark it anywhere in your calendar i tell it today in next two years india needs around 1 lakh drone pilots okay so where your salary range would be anywhere from 80k to 2 lakhs per month in india itself how many of you are aware about literally a drone needs a pilot who is certified <clears throat> yes great and who certifies it anyone no who certifies the drone pilots this is the last thing then we'll move into python and how python is going to help you here yeah government of course which organization see like we should be aware that which organization or which uh, part of the government aviation exactly if you call that dgca is doing it okay just search what is dgca and find out what it is and exactly dgca is doing it okay so things apart where python is getting rele relevant here this must be the question which is popping up into your mind right this must come in ai okay then i see like three four people have only like uh, Uh, coming up again and again with answers what about others you don't want to like 
get writing drone code yes of course python is going to be helpful in that but basically it will be carried out with another language but of course python is not going to miss out things data analytics data science data engineering apart from that all these words are like uh, like crazy words i mean i can't tell this as crazy words right like popular viral words which you see all over the web that's why data analyst data scientist and data engineer are coming up what are the other words or what are the other uh, guys who would be working they are dependent on python yeah they will be made to depend on python at a point machine learning yes it is done using python scientific programming data analytics see like you take a car we'll take a car itself to drive a car ai is needed ml is needed okay to like uh, train the car in a better way or to optimize the car we need data science we need data analysts okay to gather all these data and uh, like use it properly we need data engineers okay and uh, devops people now there's a new thing is emerging in the market called ml ops devops means developer plus operations ml ops means machine learning engineer plus operations okay and if you take drone pilot people who knew to code as well as to drive a drone okay so here piloting and the technology gets merged up if healthcare people are coming in the peop the person who know just about measuring the health parameter is not needed there the person who knew health relevant stuff as well as an expert in uh, uh, technology will be considered for that okay we call them subject matter experts okay so it goes the list goes on so all these guys are definitely in one or the other way dependent on python i don't tell that all these things could be done only with python you can also do it with other languages but in one or the other way they'll be dependent on python and python becomes the uh, highly preferred language for all these stuff which i have written here all right so now now do you get an idea why learning python even though you are not going to take your career in that way getting to know about python how important it is and how useful it is you got an idea great so if you have until this if you have any questions or any conceptual uh, doubts regarding this you can post it in the chat box i'll be answering it maybe next 2 minutes for that yeah mr bharat i'll come to that question at the end Yes, Mr. Hari, friend. We'll go to Python. Don't worry. No, I didn't change the slide. The slide get gets holded here. I didn't change the slide. Yeah. Okay, great then. I think now we can slowly slip on into Python. See, we just had an eagle eye view and just one example in the market where. python or learning about python or knowing about python or knowing about coding is going to help you let me take up one more simple question before going with uh, going ahead with python is python the only language do all this yeah uh, no miss uh, satyapriya i've already mentioned python is the highly preferred language for all these things that doesn't mean that it can be done only with python okay you can also do it with javascript you can also do it with c++ c okay so you will be the instructor for any course of kvi <laughs> uh so mr bharat that depends okay we do have like a pool of uh, external mentors internal mentors industry people okay uh, i think there are uh, more than 300 people who will be like training you and uh, maybe if you have a luck i might be there okay yes <clears throat> okay let me uh, come on for a new question how many of you had bought a new mobile in the last 90 days or 100 days
no one <laughs> at least someone tell it just for an example i'm asking you <laughs> okay consider i'll i i will assume that someone in the room bought a mobile for 30k in last 90 days or in a matter of 3 months okay you bought it for exactly 30000 rupees okay and now i'm going to now in the meeting itself i'm going to pay you 30000 rupees and i'm going to buy the mobile okay so you have 30000 rupees with you now will you buy the same mobile same model which you bought before 90 days or within 90 days again hope you got the question will you buy the same model same mobile which you just bought between uh, this 90 days you, will you buy the same thing again no no okay what about others yes not even a single s answer not just in this batch or in this particular uh, crowd i have like asked this question to more than 25000 people around india okay i haven't got a single s for this answer what's the reason for this everyone told no that's fine you should justify your answer right to try the latest technology if i like that i will buy it. that depends upon your own discretion to try a new type changing prices some spec would support updated one yes exactly that's where we stand latest updated okay a lot of such words are coming up you need to buy an upgraded mobile for the same thing but how long it's been you uh, you bought yeah of course i'll add that new word version new version or the updated version how long it's been that i mean you bought that mobile not even 90 days okay even your rbcs will stay in your body for 120 days okay what is rbc that is red blood cells okay and it's not even 90 days you want something upgraded yes so by this example i would like you to uh, take into the picture how fast the market is getting updated or upgraded yes can you understand the face of how rapidly the market is getting upgraded to bring you that uh, picture into the mind only i got this question okay so if the market is getting upgraded in such a fast and if we don't get upgraded as per the face of the market then there's no point in blaming the government or the education system or anything okay about not getting a job or not getting a proper opportunity right you can't cure a cancer with paracetamol the same way the market is growing in such a rate so there is a definite need if you wanted to grow okay and in in some time it will the statement will become like if you wanted to even survive okay see today before 20 years no one thought that Uh, we can't survive with mobiles but today i don't know how many of you will be able to survive with peace of mind without mobile internet and uh, the other modes of electronics okay the market have changed in such a way maybe in next 5 years today if you have this it is good to have the upgrades in technology but in next 5 years it will it will be like you can't survive with that upgraded version of gadgets or electronics or anything the situation will change that way so it is good to get upgraded in in whatever ways uh, that would, you, you would like to get upgraded okay and the fastest upgrading language is python according to me i don't have the statistics for that because as of now in the current day we have like 4 lakh plus supporting packages for this okay as of now maybe if, uh, since you are new you might not understand uh, or get the intensity of what 4 lakh packages means to an uh, uh, language okay so maybe when you get into the scenario a little more in deep we'll talk about it okay 
the fastest upgrading language why do i tell the fastest upgrading language is that um recently like they have tested and if you people wanted to go even i'll tell you there is an event happening in docker's website i don't know how many people knew what is docker this technology is used by a nasa scientist a group of nasa scientists um like to attempt something towards an asteroid okay they used docker and inside that docker is a different thing and uh, they used python over there also okay and it it went live yesterday you can go see the nasa person nasa scientist speaking about it okay so that's why i tell python is like a rapidly upgrading language and that doesn't mean that they only used python they also used other languages but python on priority okay so let's get going from here any questions until this yeah sir from where you get these updates see um again i have to fall into data analytics a little bit uh see consider you go to google and search for something consider i search for um how to lose weight okay i just search this thing and come out okay and when you go to instagram youtube facebook or any other area where advertisement gets popped up what do you see there have you observed what happens over there Uh, nalan kumar it doesn't mean that to learn programming you need c and c++ i'll come to this question okay i got you sir but turned off personalized ads <laughs> don't worry mr bharat even you if you turn off that on an average minimum daily you will be tracked by 600 track uh, trackers okay yes i'll come to that uh, topic again so you would get products advertisements um uh, exact i mean you'll get everything which is relevant to this okay yeah even sms everything okay so you get what you search as there is a proverb right uh, you become what you think i think uh, i i don't know who said this proverb uh, i think uh, everyone must have heard this thing what you think is what you become right the same thing what you search is what is going to be projected to you and why am i telling this is to answer the question where do i get all these updates from since i'm just rolling along this technology uh, healthcare sector and all the information which is needed to me i just search things around that i just experiment things around that so all this information like one or the other way it will fall in into my uh, any of the social media applications which i'm using okay that's the only reason there's no single way to get all the informations onto your hands because information is wealth not the money <clears throat> okay so moving forward with python yeah before going ahead one more uh, thing which is relevant to c c++ java what else language do you guys know can you list out some rust javascript then blockchain is a concept it's not a language and uh, solidity is the platform where they used to do all this relevant stuff ruby yes metaverse again it's a platform sql yes r then we do have go kotlin yes visual visual basic is an old stuff which worked with dot net dart yes oracle is again a company that's not a language github is an platform again yes c sharp c sharp c++ i've written c sharp bash script uh, bash script can't be brought under a language 
okay cloud computing is again a concept that's not a language that is language in the sense all the language which the computer understands quantum no i'm not sure metaverse is a platform it is a concept okay it's not a language i'll, I'll we'll take a deep dive into it because we we'll, we have to go through python yeah octave i believe there's a language okay see there are like 165 plus officially recognized language html of course the primary language php everything yeah i'm adding everything here okay so 165 plus recognized officially recognized languages okay and more than that even okay and i don't know how many of you knew that there is a language called don't think that i made a spelling mistake it is the language name by itself how many of you knew this anaconda is an environment that's not a language again pascal is a language yes mr nalin kumar how many of you know this language computer language <laughs> rajini plus plus so and it is uh, built upon python actually yes it is relevant to superstar rajini if you are a big fan of uh, superstar you would easily code in this platform because all the punch dialogues used by rajini would be used as a functions here okay but like uh, all the, the whole language is even just for fun uh, don't take it seriously just go explore it uh, try that and this is a python based language it is built upon python okay so like this much upgraded python is okay i can't give a better example than this to tell you how much uh, dynamic and how much upgraded python is okay yes so going ahead so okay why did i took all these languages is that um if you take c c++ uh, java and all these major languages they are compiler based languages okay and if you take python r and all they are interpreter based languages so what is the difference between a compiler and an interpreter in general see i'm not like taking it too technical just think the normal english vocabulary what is a compiler and what is an interpreter why no one gets that interpreter what is an interpreter someone who interrupts or interprets not interrupt interpret things yes interpreter executes line by line exactly line to line converts is, yes exact consider you are writing like five lines of code okay what how compiler will deal with it you know it will just take up all the five six lines of code we should have done all at once is yes, uh, exactly like mr hemant said okay it will take the whole program and it will tell you how many problems are there like how many warnings are there how many errors are there in in your syntax all these things but interpreter is not like that okay if you write five lines of code he'll just look into the first line if there is any error in the first line he'll stop the program execution here itself he'll not even see uh, he'll not even look into the second line okay so uh, don't take uh, the word which i use he as a gender biased thing i'm just referring python okay okay so this guy uh, won't even look into what is there in the second line okay he'll just straight away stop the execution there itself if there is any problem if he is in the third line means he'll stop it there okay so this is how a compiler and an interpreter works okay and why i took this example here is that if you take any hardware relevant stuff all these drones or basically take your um, what is that um, tv television see your television runs on android these days okay there is something which converts a normal electricity or some uh, uh, waves of the electricity to a picture do you know what happens in between this 
see what we have on a TV. Some electricity, that is raw electricity comes from somewhere the TV signal comes, that too is an electricity. All these are like converted to a picture. What happens in between? Alternate frequency screen. Yes, of course, we see that on the screen. <clears throat> pixel decomposition. See, pixel decomposition won't be order. Okay, handling pixels in a way. Coding. Yeah, this is where we come. Sine wave, cosmic, everything is there. Okay, but the highest or high level view is that there is some electronic plus that is hardware plus software related stuff which converts all these electric pulses into a picture and sound okay yes and you know we call this a firmware we don't call that a software basically because it is a firmware which keeps things active okay you know even wi-fi if you have a Wi-Fi modem at your home, it is connected to a wire and you are connected to this Wi-Fi and it does everything. You know what is there in that box? There is an embedded system which runs things over. We call the software which handles that embedded system, we call that a firmware. Okay. So all these firmwares are the things which are, which are closely working towards the hardwares will be done using C or C++ only. Okay. Because that is like a low level language which straight away where the computer can easily understand it okay human it will take uh, some time to understand for the human okay but these hardwares will easily understand it but python is a high level language okay. no one will use python for firmware and all okay in real time i, I mean uh, no big companies have used it yet because what Python will do is it'll it'll take like two, three steps to communicate with the hardware. It will not be able to straight away communicate with the hardware. Okay. But all the other magic works, he'll do like a charm. C and C++ will struggle over there. And why we call it high level is that humans can understand it easily, but the computers will take some extra time when compared to C and C++ to understand it. Okay. So... That's it. Python is a high level language and these languages are low level languages. And low and high is because of uh, uh, the hardware interactivity. Tell us about firmware. Okay, I can't go too much into firmware. I'll give you the needful information. Do you know how many companies uh, work on this firmware? See, it's not just for TV. All the rockets. Okay. Uh, the things which goes to the satellite, etc., etc., etc. Everywhere there is a software, right? All those things. Majorly, it took it will be take, taken over by C and C plus plus. IoT, yes, of course, but IoT can be done with. Uh, a lot of people use Python for IoT even. Not all the hardware industries. Most of the hardcore hardware industries. Okay. Yes. So all those things are firmware, and they use it. Uh, things in such a way. Okay. Someone, yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, the question is that uh, how many companies, can you list out like five companies which works on this firmware? Because we guys are like aware of a lot of companies, right? Can you list out five companies? Intel works on the chipset by itself. Yes, it also works on firmware. Fine. Seagate is a hardware company. I don't know how many of you are aware that Seagate doesn't build the firmware. They, that's an, another uh, sister concern which builds it. Yeah, Qualcomm. Again, they are a uh, chipset company. Firmware and software. See, see, we are not into electronics. We'll talk this if we have time at the end. Apple, no, no. TCS never does that. IBM never does that. Okay. Uh, even I don't know much of the company. How many of you remember this BPL, the old TV company, Philips? All those guys started with that. Okay. And in India, there are less than 20 companies who can work on the firmwares. Okay. And it's hard to crack the market. No, no. HP, HP and all is like they are a reseller. Deloitte is a consultant. He's an accounts person. Big force that is Deloitte, KPMG, PwC, and one more guy. Who's that? I forgot it. Okay, all these four guys are like they're accounts consultant people. Yeah, EY, exactly. Thank you, Mr. Bharat. 
Okay. Even these guys are these days recruiting a lot of data analysts who learns Python. <laughs> okay. Yes. So moving ahead, all the extra questions which I like ignored now, if we have time at the end, it will be answered. Okay. So what is the time? Okay. It's 8 1. We'll finish off like quick introduction and we'll take like three to five minutes break in between because I'm continuously speaking, right? I need that gap and you two can think about new questions meanwhile. Okay. So maybe can we take a break now for next four to five minutes? How about it? You don't need to leave the session and all. You can just stay there, but we'll have a like small gap in between and we'll restart it again. Okay, that's great. So I appreciate the evergreen hearts of you. So the time is 8.2 now. We'll start, we'll be starting at 8.5 or 8.6. Mr. Nalan Kumar, yeah, we'll answer this question at the end after 8.40. <laughs> okay. Yep. So thank you. And uh, we'll be resuming in next four minutes. Okay. I'll mute myself. And Jayshree, are you there? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, meanwhile, yeah. if you wanted to use this space, you can use this five minutes for any of your pollings or any such thing. If you have planned any such thing, you can take it. Okay. I... okay. Thank you.
Yes, guys, shall we get started? I'm back. That's great. Okay, so there's a question, sir. Oh, can the company hire me if I learn only Python? See, there are companies who do hire Python developers. If you just learn Python, you can apply to those relevant companies. Okay, yeah. So yes, going ahead. All these like basic informations, who discovered Python and all these things. I don't want you to like get bored with all those informations. We'll move ahead. What are the advantages or the attracting point towards Python? The presence of a lot of third-party modules. What is third-party? <clears throat> you should have at least heard about third-party insurance. Plugins, yeah, we can also call it that way. See, for example, you learn only A, B, C, D, the 26 letters. Consider this is Python. Okay. And with that A, B, C, D, you learn to spell words. And then with that words, you try to frame a sentence. And with that sentence, you write songs, you write letters, okay. Um, you write all your documents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. From that, we live our lives, okay. So the raw Python, just the Python language by itself is like ABCD, okay. So there should be support of other words, tunes, musics to make a song, right? So in that case, to bring up various different scenarios or to integrate it with other guys, we need modules, okay? We can define our own modules. Yes, you can also write your own module, okay? Maybe you will be given a short demo if you're like going ahead with the main boot or the different complete course, okay? Yes, so presence of third-party modules. So like that, we have four lakh plus. What is a module? Yeah, this is what I'm telling, right? See, for example, you're just having Python. You wanted to uh, um, design a new TV application which works on the television because all your TVs do have applications, right? Okay. You need all the supporting drivers that is relevant to that TV hardware to develop it in Python, right? So we call this a module. That is, which is a TV module consider. Okay. So like this, we do have lakhs of modules which could help and officially there are four lakh plus modules starting from like basically creating an, a small android app uh, for connecting it to hardware for the security purpose connecting it to the cloud and like whatever you think uh, using technology everything is possible okay so these are known as modules and the group is still growing and one more thing even if you go and search Google, Google will tell that there are only 2.2 lakh packages in Python, packages or modules. Maybe you can even search and see that is an outdated data. Okay. So this is the difference between learning completely on a Google and learning along with a mentor or from an experienced people. Okay. You can search on Google, like search how many packages does Python have or how many modules does Python have. It will give you exactly 2.2 lakhs which is very, very outdated, okay? Yes, so Python has a lot of supportive libraries, which are nothing but your modules. Open source and community development. Open, what do you mean by open source? <clears throat> yes, guys, do you hear me? What do you mean by open source? Free, okay? The alternative word for this is free and independent. You don't need to pay at any point of time, even though you earn crores and crores using Python. Okay. Consider um, if you're using any resource from me or anything from me, okay, without paying me, you can't use me. Okay, or any any services. But this thing is an open source, you, you can like use it. And community development, a lot of big community is there to support all your problems, errors, and further uh, doubts or any such thing, okay? Yes, you can download, install wherever you want, whatever you want, 
how much volume you want you can get everything in python okay everything is most of the things are open source see consider there are some private sources also for example um i don't want to name those banks there are some banks which use python okay they can't keep their packages like for the open community right it should be secured consider let's take swiss bank but swiss bank i don't know whether they are using python or not but other big banks they use python okay they can't keep it as an open source maybe for the python package or the module which helps to run their bank logics cannot be open sourced this kind of thing you won't get it right okay learning ease and support available user friendly data structures productivity and speed see if you take like um, c c++ and java definitely they are faster than uh, python okay but in, in that case if you take any other different languages definitely python do have a speed because why i tell that as a speed is that if you write 10 lines of code in c c++ or java you can write the whole 10 or even 20 lines of code in a single line using python got it so the time spent on executing 20 lines obviously it will be higher when compared it to execute a single line in python right <clears throat> so this is possible with python so these all becomes the advantage of using python all right clear any questions any discussions on this or any dilemmas you have in your mind it can be edited in the sense which one you are asking mr vivek yes others could post your questions if you have any at this point okay so it's been a long time we have been talking about python okay uh, like before going to any further history and all we'll start coding a little bit okay because like hearing all the scripts all the story about it but without coding you won't get the basic experience even okay i won't tell that in a matter of just this two hours i'm going to make you an expert definitely it's not possible and you even know that we'll get kick started with it okay so where we are going to code that becomes the first question where can we code python can i code it in this ppt or can i code it in a notepad <clears throat> why i don't see any responses am i connected yeah so where can we code that if we can't code it here then where can we go write the code ide ides need an interpreter that's the exact word okay pycharm okay that's completely fine okay we need an interpreter to run this okay yeah of course pycharm jupyter notebook visual studio code uh, sonar cloud colab guvi ide a lot of things are there i will come to that we need an interpreter to run the code okay but before like 7 8 years people were using the interpreters or the compilers as a stand alone element for example if you wanted to write c or c, c or c++ code you need to install a software called turbo c++ or turbo c okay then you can write the code there okay if you wanted to write java or javascript code you need a netbeans eclipse okay or you should know how to write Uh, or handle things using command prompt to do this but what happened in the thing is that between the year 2013 to 2015 the whole corporate industry was so much interested in something called ide at that time we they don't even know the term ide okay what they wanted to do is a single editor or a single screen i wanted to write i uh, like multiple languages and run that there itself okay we'll see that i'll get on to you another screen just go to google and type guvi id okay you must log in or sign up over there please do that 
or else without logging in also we can use i believe yes i'll rename it if you just type guvi ide the first link which you get on google or second link will guide you through this it will it should take you to this page how many of you uh, got to, maybe you can take a minute to do this as of now i'm just going to like explain what is ide we'll go for the coding part in a while So yes, do anyone have issues opening this? If so, please let me know or else I'll try to post the link. Wait a minute. I'm posting the link and it must land you up in this page. Okay, let me go for the explanation. So what is an ID? What do you mean by that? Integrated development environment, okay. So development environment is fine. We are going to develop something using Python or C or C++. What does this word integrated means is that if you just see the top right corner of GUI ID, you can choose, I believe it was 18 languages earlier. Um, now it's increased, I believe. Even R is included. I don't know what this D is. Okay. So Lua is included. A lot of new things are included here. Okay. So you can just select this and you can start writing code in any language as per your wish. Okay, so all these languages are integrated to this particular editor. So that's why we call it an integrated development environment. You should understand the meaning for that. Got it? Why we call things as IDE? Excuse me. Yes, you got it. Any queries? Any doubts on what is an IDE? Okay, see the logic is that we are just getting to know what is IDE. IDE is abbreviated as Integrated Development Environment. Okay, this is where we'll write our code and execute it basically. Why we call it, it as an integrated environment is that you can use any language which is listed on here. Okay. So all the language becomes integrated. Okay. Integrated in the sense you cannot work on cross languages like half of the code in Python and half of the code in C. That is not possible. Okay. You have to write the whole code in a single language. But interchangeably, you can choose any language when you're working. Okay. That's why we call it as an integrated development environment. Okay. So obviously we have Python 2 and 3 here. We are going to work on the latest version, Python 3. All right. So what are the other platforms we have or what are the other ways to achieve this? One is the local way by installing a software like PyCharm, I'll, I'll list it out. Or the cloud environment like the GUI ID, all these things. Okay. So Anaconda, uh, Python IDLE, then Jupyter Notebook, JPYNB, then Py, uh, Spider, then what else? VS Code. Okay. And many more things are there. Where in all these areas, you can execute Python code. And you should install a software for this 
on any system which you are using let it be mac let it be ubuntu let it be windows anything you have to install it and then you have to open it and then you have to code it but the cloud cloud environments are not like that you can just go to a website and straight away start coding for example guvi id um there are many sandboxes for that and the most popular thing is colab which is a product of google okay Colab is where it's not an integrated environment, but you can work only with Python there. Okay. We call that a notebook, Python notebook. Right. You can't use other languages, but there is a way to do that. But Google won't allow you most, most uh, of the time. Okay. <clears throat> Sir, is it Google or TensorFlow community? No. It is a product of Google straight away. TensorFlow community develops things only related to TensorFlow that which could be used on computers, graphical cards, as well as your mobiles. Okay. They concentrate only on the ML work. They don't come for the pl platform uh, uh, related stuff. Got it? So how you can access Colab is that. I'll show you like two things. You can like work with anything. One is this GUI IDE. And just go type Colab. You'll get on the top, you'll get Google Colab. Just move into it. Okay, you must get a welcome screen like this. On the top, see, you can just read all these things when you have time. There will be file. Click on file and click on open, I mean, a new notebook. Okay, so you'll get a fresh notebook like this wait it's loading where you can see things related to this okay you can just have any name and you can write your python code here and using this cute little play button which is here you can execute the code colab has a lot of other features but it's not the right time to explore it uh, on the session so these are the areas where you can execute right so these two platforms i do recommend for python learning okay. else you can go forward for the installation and do things okay. so writing our first code let's print something print it's gooey friday okay so you should have a doubt, a complete new user should have a doubt that where do I run this code, right? In Colab, we had a play button there itself, but in GUI ID, you'll have it at the bottom. Okay, I'm marking it here. Write your code and press this play button. You must see the outputs here. I made a spelling mistake, huh? sorry. Okay, it's Gooey Friday. This is done. So write your first code and experiment it. We may take one minute. It's 824. And let me know if you face any issues. And I'm doing the same thing in Colab also. I'm pasting it and I'm running that. Yeah, we got it. It's Gooby Friday. All right. So one minute to try that. If you're done, just give me a thumbs up. I don't know you guys are trying or not. Maybe if you think that you are done, just give me a thumbs up. We'll move forward. Yes. Okay. To get started with we'll be just moving with how python handle numbers how python handle strings okay so people who are completely new to coding this might be new the word strings strings are nothing but this kind of words or sentences or anything which is made up of 
numbers alphabets special characters together is known as strings okay then what are the different operators available in python okay like we do have three different things arithmetic operator um logical operator and comparison operator okay so we'll be going through this uh, let's see how far we can go with the given time because a lot of questions even need to be answered right from 8 40 we'll take the last 10 20 minutes to clear your doubts we'll start going with this okay yes so <clears throat> consider here i'm just going to use colab from now on because it would be like um, I prefer the dark street to code, obviously. That's why that's the only reason. Okay. Yes. So yeah. The second thing which we are going to do is um, consider I wanted to take an input from the user while I print it. I don't want it to see we call this hard coding, writing something straight away. Rather than that, I wanted to take an user input when the program runs. Okay. For example, consider if you go and insert your card in the ATM, it asks for your pin, right? That is your user input. You as a user, ATM user, you give the inputs over there. So like that, there is a function called input in Python. This is an inbuilt function, which Python already has. Okay. So this will take the input and where I have stored this input is that inside a function called print. So the innermost thing will get executed first, then the outermost thing will get executed. So it will first take the input, then it's going to print it. All right. So inside print input, what I'm going to write is, uh, what's your name? Uh, spelling mistakes yes okay i'm just running it so when the program is running the computer will ask what's your name okay i'm just giving that netaji space normal so i've just printed netaji normal because i just printed okay it won't print what's your name and all again because that is an uh, string stored inside the input function all right. So for example, if you go into your bank applications or any mobile app, when you just go into it, it'll tell you, hi, uh, normal welcome. And even this wiki notification these days, you know, it's crazy. When it's like 7.30, 8 o'clock or dinner time or that time, okay, a notification will come. What, what is the latest notification you saw on like swiggy or any food, food applications? Didn't you see any kind of such stuff? Maybe, yeah, I should give you time to answer it, obviously. Mawa Biryani order Jay. Yes, so you must be somewhere like belonging to uh, like Telangana R A P, right? So it comes even in your like own language. And one more thing, you know, they track it very beautifully. Even though your location is fixed somewhere on to Chennai or any other language related part, they won't choose that particular language. For example, if you're in Bangalore, if you order things, it must come in like Canada, right? But it won't. Okay. I don't know. Uh, even you have registered a lot of things through GUI. GUI doesn't know to which language you belong to, but Swiggy know. Okay, Swiggy know your mother tongue better than any anyone in the industry. <laughs> okay, so yes. <clears throat> See, consider how, sir, of course, data science plus analytics. It's a long story if I wanted to explain. See, if I like shortcut the story and tell you, you won't understand the exact logic, how they pick up your uh, mother tongue or your particular language. Okay. I have to explain step by step what happens inside the industry and how they are using it. And one more thing, uh, 
very soon sugi is going to come up with an health application do you find any relevance between swiggy and an health application before going to the further coding part let me tell you that diet of course maybe you might think that they are giving you something which is relevant to uh, diet related food or something like that customized <laughs> no mr nalan kumar not like that see i'll tell you as i told you they know about your mother language or the mother tongue better than us they know about your health better than you by yourself see i'm repeating it again they knew your health condition better than you okay because they know what kind of food you eat okay what you eat is what i mean is what through your built your body is built okay so they can easily get to know whether i wanted to tell you lose weight or to gain weight or if you are in a correct shape i know how to bring you up to uh, like keep your healthy lifestyle up again okay so they knew better than you what type of nutrients you are picking up how much cholesterol you eat how much fat you eat how much protein you eat everything they know okay so based upon that you'll get recommendations soon it's going to happen even you can write that somewhere and keep it okay on that ke uh, this guy called netaji told us this na no? it's working here okay this will happen okay so coming back here like greeting the user i wanted to print my name like hi and my name together okay so when i enter my name it has to greet me so i just added a hi and add a plus symbol here okay there's no space right i'll add a space here see when i give an input it welcomes me with the same word hi neeta ji okay so this is how you can make things with uh, python related strings and the input next going forward how do i do mathematical calculations okay python this notebook especially not just uh, leave about python this notebook especially works like a calculator straight away you can go type 1 plus 2 and you'll get the answer technically if you take a python like any local installations you must type 1 plus 2 print okay anything negative value positive value anything we you wish would come here so what is the answer for this can anyone tell me before i execute it One plus two minus two plus two multiplied by two. Five, one answer. What about others? Is it five? You see, I didn't ask anything like very complex and all. One plus two minus two plus two multiplied by two. <laughs> Six, three, five. I'm just spelling out like reciting all the answers which I got. Three five again. Okay, let's finally see what's the answer then. Five. All the people who said five, it is correct. The rest everything is wrong because there is a rule which carries over your arithmetic oper. Arithmetic operation means all this addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, all these things. Okay, so yeah. In this case, there is a rule or a principle behind this. Exactly, Mr. Satyapriya. Board mass. That is brackets of division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Okay, for so first division will happen, then multiplication, then addition, and then subtraction. And of course, if we have brackets relevant to that, the brackets or the innermost elements will get calculated first. Whichever is present inside the brackets will get calculated first. Next, this rule will get applied. okay so it straight away works out in all the programming languages even okay 
so you can play with that next we'll go for a kind of um, logical okay so what is logical logical operators are logical gates if i tell gates you will remember it easily no no don't worry we are not going to write if else condition while and all anyway yes exactly and or nor xr uh, x and nand sorry not nand nor nor i written here na okay. all these kind of stuff is known as logical okay let me see how many of you remember logic gates okay so how do we write an or condition is that in other language we used to go with this kind of symbols here we have you can straight away write it like in sentence one or zero so what is the output of this yeah others i'm waiting okay you answered it very easily uh, let me check that mm yeah what is the answer for this one or zero or zero of course the previous answer everyone told right i didn't execute it what would be the answer for this <laughs> exactly it should be one okay so if i wanted to play with and print one and one so what will be the output for this eleven ah my goodness maybe that might be a typo yes okay one and zero we'll get this but let's make it little more tricky now print one or zero and uh, wait a minute let me think yes so what is the output for this one 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 ah, a lot of people are telling one sir what is the function r and r? see it's not a function it's just the thing which you learnt in physics and gate r gate and all is there now if i write it this way you might like get that so x y you'll have 1 uh, 1 1 0 0 1 0 0 okay the r of x and y is 1 1 1 0 and for and condition you'll write it in the reverse way error or oh, sorry definitely it's not an error yes it's a one okay um then let make it this way mm. what is zero and zero zero right then what i'll do is i'll make this one i'll make this zero or this one and i'll make this zero so now what is the answer the improvement seems to be like very sharp uh, this is the guy which gets zero then <laughs> okay yes okay so like this you can add any number of logical gates and of course the combination of not and and everything could be done here let's quickly like experiment comparison how do you compare one and the other the way by which we live these days in the modern world through comparison how do we compare using greater than less than or equal to symbol that's it so what is the output for this hmm 
okay let me go with one example because you will get the output as true or false technically we call it boolean which means only two output either yes or no or true or false or one or zero like that okay so the question which goes here is that uh, is 10 greater than 20 definitely it's a false okay so it goes this way so this is what we have as logical arithmetic and see you can apply all your operators like 10 less than 20 you can have any numbers or less than equal to greater than equal to and if you wanted to check something is equal or not means double equal to should be taken is 10 and 10 equal Yes, so you'll be getting true in that case. Okay, so this is how we go with um, the basic string functionalities. This is like very, very basic just to get kick started. Arithmetic operators, uh, logical uh, comparison, I mean, logical operators and comparison operators. Okay, so using this, what we will actually do in the coding is that. Uh, I'll tell you the last thing before we uh, go for the doubt session or the discussion session. See, basically, what do you think the coding does? What do the developers or the coders do sitting inside the big buildings? Let's take a simple example. Okay. See, this is your uh, uh, mobile. How many of you use face lock? This is your camera. No one uses face lock. Okay. Consider you have been told to write a logic to do this face lock. Okay. Don't consider anything about coding. Okay. Technically, just think if you wanted to do something or lock and unlock something using a face lock, what would be your first step? input from where camera from which camera front camera or back camera front okay before that you need to check whether the mobile has camera or not these days it's different but this should also be checked whether the driver for camera is properly working or not next you will check for the previous images or the trained images next if it is right you'll allow in if it is wrong you won't allow in okay if the number of iterations goes for many times you will lock the mobile again there's a big logic behind this but if we just talk about it these are five steps you need to make the computer understand you as a human know the logic behind the camera how it works okay you need to make the computer understand Okay, first check whether camera is there. If it is there, do this. If it is there, do this. If it is there, do this. Else, do this. Okay, like fixing up all the logics in such a way. See, computer understand only these things. Using this kind of syntaxes or the way of coding, you have to make the computer understand all this and make it work. That's it. This is what the coders do all through the IT industry or the computer industry or the mechanical industry or anywhere. So the only part is that you have to train your brain in such a way to teach a computer. This is what coding is. So you don't need to worry like, too much about coding and all. Okay. You need to learn. See, consider you're learning a new language. Okay. You're learning Hindi. You're learning Malayalam. You're learning uh, fra, sp, fra, fra, I mean, French, Spanish, or any such language means. You need to learn that in such a way that you make the respective language people understand it in the similar way out of many languages available in python i mean uh, computer you are going to learn one language in such a way to make the computer understand a particular thing okay so most of the people think that coding is complex yes of course coding is complex if you think that's something jargon okay it is just transferring the logic which you have into your mind into this that's it okay so uh, we end the Python hands-on here because we'll take the last 15 or 20 minutes for all your questions.
So I'll stop sharing here. Yes, so questions ahead. Sir, we get any certificate for this session? Uh, Ms. Jayasri? Uh, actually, we don't get any certifications. Okay, see for this free session, you won't be getting any certificates. And I think the link is not pasted properly, Ms. Jayasri. Can you paste that again? Maybe I'll try that once. So meanwhile, you can just take the poll, guys. As Jubilee student, I need programming. See, as we saw the complete story, wherever you belong to, and you know how many doctors are learning to code? Okay. I mean, not exactly the doctors, the medical uh, specialist. Any more upcoming sessions for Python? Again, the answer from is Jayasree. And there's a question that will there be any, any more session for Python? Mr. Yes. Sri, I think I mean, yeah. we are uh, planning uh, for uh, three more sessions. Mm -hmm. So, in the same series, Python 101, three more sessions are remaining. Yes. Resend the link. Sorry, there's no link. I think the link is by mistake. You can leave that. So, can you share your contact? I need to learn from you. Okay, see that the thing is that uh, I've already given you the hint. You can just Google my name and you can like technically take, take that. Definitely, even though if you just text your numbers, I won't be taking that out. See, as I already told you, I've in the last like five, seven, six, seven years, I've dealt with more than 25,000 people. Uh, definitely, it's on your hands. Okay, just Google my name, Netaji Nirmal. You'll definitely find a way. Yes, where are you from? In the sense, you're asking about my location. I'm from South India. Do you want to know a little more? Because I saw this question earlier. Give some ideas for Python projects. See, like for this question, we have tons of idea on the Google. Okay. I do have this one idea, right? Can you like make it work? In that case, like the maybe the car related stuff, that's a good project, right? But we can't do that now before learning it. So as a beginner, you can search out tons of projects on Google or through Google also. So which state? Yeah, I belong to Tamil Nadu. But I, do to, I don't stay in Tamil Nadu a lot of the time. Designation, okay. See, for Gubi, I'm an external mentor and I currently work with a company called I Am Neo as a senior skill development engineer. That's an uh, like subject matter expert for data science and data engineering. And I do work with like multiple companies. Can we run Python on mobile? Yes, of course you can. There's a lot of possibility. People, you didn't finish off the polls yet. So finish it like as soon as possible. You have like, see, you can open Colab uh, answering Ms. Durga Prasad question. You can open Colab in your uh, browser and you can code it and execute it. That's one way. Or else you do have many Android applications to make your Python work over there. Yes. Further questions? Data science undergrad, what advice can you give an aspiring data scientist? See, uh, Mr. Ram, uh, in this case, I would like to tell you, consider you're asking me that you are into a swimming class. Okay, the question which you posted me, how I understand is that, should I swim in a swimming pool or in a river or in a lake or in the sea or just on the land? Okay, this is what the question sounds like for me. So you should decide what you want it to be and where you want it to be. As a data scientist, you might have now been aware that 
it can you can become a data scientist in automobile industry medical industry or the financial industry or the aeronautics side the space side or just in the common market you can become data scientist anywhere so see where your passion is where your mind works better okay or that means where you are getting interested even without food and sleep if you are able to work on a particular domain just focus on your data science studies in relation to that and a lot of people are working towards climate change relevant data science okay explore it and find the one thing which i would tell you is that explore 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 and explore and how do you explore not just through the web go experiment it go in live to the meetings to meet the experts to meet the people okay you'll get growing is replit a good platform yes it's a very very uh, good platform replit not just for mobile for the whole development what's your thought on plc's and embedded system two options one thing in india you're going to get a lot of opportunities if you become an entrepreneur okay and on the other case if you're going to become an employee um maybe in terms of finance i'm not sure on that if you go into like qualcom intel arm um, all these companies your finances will be good else you should take an entrepreneurial route on uh, plc's and embedded systems okay so yes which company needed python language all the companies gui needed python even company whomever i speak whomever i hear like as i told you if you take gst or sorry any tax related stuff which everyone is involved there python is required if you take stock market there python is required if you take anything which is around you definitely it will have a touch with python okay so all the companies which you see which you use daily do require python especially uh, airbnb um red bus uh dominos um even swiggy as we were talking all these guys use it a lot yes thank you mr ram so any more questions for me Yes. So, one last question. How many of you watched Avatar two? I think it got released today, right? Yes. It's not a kind of promotion and all. So, one historic moment in that. Technically, as a technology person, I should let you know that, right? Uh, like, underwater cameras are used. I think everyone would be aware about it. One more thing. Until this moment. or until avatar all the movies which is uh, like displayed on the theaters was in 24 fps that is frames per second okay and only the gamers or people who do gaming will go for 60 frames per second or even 120 frames per second right and in theaters in the complete history of human this is the first movie which is showcased or displayed or cast broadcasted in 48 frames per second okay it will give you like a very immersive uh, thing uh, just try that out in theaters if you want to really experience the power of uh, technology over there okay so what that 48 frames per second will do you have to search and find it i can't like go a lot on that this is the technology news relevant to avatar one is underwater cameras where sony worked more than one and a half years to like produce that camera by itself okay and the next thing is that frames per second which is literally a historic thing where a lot of people might not note that okay but it's it's a like big technological breakthrough which should be uh, revealed so that's why i'm doing here okay i'm done